After nine months of injury, surgery, and recovery, Camp Peterson is back. Camp Peterson's one lap away from what I would arguably call the best race that he's raced. The South African full gas mode as he comes to the line. It is going to be Cameron Peterson who takes the checkered flag and a monumentous victory. But now, with lessons learned and changes overnight, can Camp P go back to back? It's time to find out right now. And we are back at Barber Motorsports Park where it is time for the Steel Commander Superbike Class in the 10th anniversary championship season of Moto America continuing on. This is a three race weekend here at Barber Motorsports Park and we are getting set now for race number two. We had a lot of action uh, yesterday in the first race, but it's going to be an action packed day of competition. Let's get down to the grid area and Michael Hill. Yeah, thank you guys. I'm down here on the grid. Uh, it's absolutely packed behind me. Uh, the grid absolutely full of not just teams and riders, but various uh, distinguished guests. And uh, I guess now it is that time to uh, ask everybody around the circuit to please stand because, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our opening ceremonies. So uh, to sing once again the national anthem of the United States of America, that honor today goes as it did yesterday to 10-year-old London Coy. Ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding for the national anthem of the United States. States. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket red glare the What a beautiful voice, just 10 years old. That is a great way to start off a race day for the Steel Commander Superbike category. Roger, that gave me goosebumps. Yeah, just, I mean, what an incredible voice that she has at such a young age. And, I mean, just she belted it out. Even, I didn't think she could top yesterday, and uh, today was a little bit better. And just looking out on the track, the track temperatures look great out there. The temperature is good. The uh, you know, the clouds are great. I'm just really looking forward to this second Superbike race uh, this afternoon. We have very different conditions here today than what we had yesterday. The heat has been on the racetrack all day. How is that going to change the physicality of this race, especially considering that they have to do it twice? But just the hotter it is, the more work, you know, you know how it is when it's hot. It's just you sweat more. And when you sweat more, you know, you could get dehydrated easier. So there's a lot. I mean, that's the big thing about three races in one weekend. You really got to focus on your diet and your nutrition and staying hydrated. And when it's warmer like this, it's, it's a lot harder to do, but it's even more important. I'm looking out the window and seeing all of the umbrellas, the teams are still out on the grid. So we're going to go back down to Michael Hill. Yeah, thanks, Jamie. Uh, how amazing was that national anthem? Stood right next to her, uh, as you said, Jamie, goosebumps, an incredible voice, only 10 years of age. Uh, what, a, what a great future she's going to have uh, in music. Uh, fantastic. Right then, let's have a look at the grid. This is uh, the bike of Jake Gagne. I think he's run off just for a little, uh, little, uh, little uh, toilet oh, break. In fact, he's walking uh, back now. Uh, to my right-hand side uh, is uh, Loris Baz. Uh, he's in full, uh, full focus here. Uh, girlfriend uh, just holding the umbrella. Can I just squeeze in there uh, as well? Uh, Loris, I haven't had a chance to speak to you uh, so far that's because I just didn't want any more permanent marker on my head but uh, how are you feeling front row of the grid solid race yesterday and as you said to me uh, earlier in the weekend you're getting more used to these tires again it's only a matter of time before we see you back on the top step yeah yeah I mean uh, yeah, we had a good weekend I'm really happy with all the job that Ducati and the, the 
the crew at SDT in Atlanta. I was feeling bad on the bike there. They came back with a brand new setup and I'm getting used to this. So a uh, completely different bike than Atlanta, feeling really good on one lap. Uh, yesterday, just not feeling as good from the beginning. Then I had a big save in turn four. My foot peg touched the floor and it unlocked the foot peg. So then my foot peg was going off all race. So I was struggling with that all race, but um, still some solid points. That's what I was not able to do in 21, to score some solid points when it was a bad day. So yeah, I'm pretty confident. Just have to take time and uh, getting used to, to that bike again, but I'm enjoying so much uh, that V4R. Oh, it's, uh, it's the best bike I ever rode, so I'm happy to be back on, on this beast. Thanks, uh, Loris. And as he says, uh, issues yesterday, one foot peg uh, for the, pretty much the majority of the race. Back to you guys. What can Loris Baz do in this one? Well, I love the approach that he took that back when he was in the championship in 2021, he wasn't able to make anything of it when he had a bad day yesterday. Not the same. Jay Gagne leading the way, 65 points. Cameron Bobier with 45, 20 points behind him. Cameron Peterson right there in the mix as well. Sean Dylan Kelly has been consistent uh, so far this season. Josh Heron looking to move up on the podium again. Again, J.D. Beach, I mean, the list just goes on and on. Anyone can get it. Steel Commander Superbike coverage is brought to you by Steel Commander Corps, a leading steel building manufacturer offering expertise, innovation, and a dedication to quality. And by Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series. Beautiful shots from Barber Motorsports Park as we await the start of our second Steel Commander Superbike race. Let's get right down to the grid and Hannah Lopa. On the front row here, Loris Baz starting from second position. Yesterday, quite a battle out there. You changed up your rear tire choice for today. So you were on that R7 compound. You've now chosen to go with the softer compound. Take us through that decision. Well, yesterday, yeah, I had that, I had that problem on the race, but from the three, four, four first laps, I could see I didn't have the pace to go with those guys. And um, yeah, if I want to go with them at the beginning of the race, I need the five. I don't know if it will go until the end for our bike, but we have to try. We, uh, we didn't have the opportunity on Friday to do long run on it. We were trying other things. And yesterday, the majority of the fast guys were on the five. So got to try and uh, see, see what happened. But yeah, pretty confident enjoying the, riding the bike a lot. The guys have been doing a fantastic job all weekend. So. Just uh, now it's enjoy time during the race. Best of luck out there to Loris Baz. Looking to get a little bit more out of that rear tire. We'll see if he keeps that same rear tire choice for race two or if he changes back to the R7. We'll keep you posted on that. I want to talk to Sean Dylan Kelly, who was in quite a battle with Loris Baz and Josh Heron yesterday. Sean being so close to that podium at the end of the race, is it discouraging and frustrating or does it just have you wanting to come out swinging even harder? I always want to come out swinging harder. Uh, we were we were in that fight, which is super important for us. Uh, second weekend on the superbike, and we're learning so much so much every time I'm out there. First time fighting with the Ducatis, and just learning what those bikes are like, what what those racers are like, and uh, definitely hurts to lose that podium on the last lap. So hopefully I'll just try to get it done a little bit sooner and keep fighting up front and make it to the box. Thanks, Sean. Guys. Yeah, thanks. And I know, Jason, you and I have talked about this off camera. We got a feeling there's going to be a lot of podiums in his future here in this Superbike class. Let's take a look at the track map, Barber Motorsports Park. 2.38 miles up and down. Quite a few passing spots here, but you definitely have to mind your P's and Q's in the last section of that racetrack, especially turns 14 through 16. If it's a last lap and you're leading and someone's on your tail section, if you leave the door open, you can find yourself in second coming out of turn. 17 barber motorsports park super fun one of the best computer generated tracks that we have in the u.s but let's take a look jason pridmore at the insta 360 track lap as we get a good view of the racetrack from on board yeah that's a great view from sean dylan kelly up over the top of turn one blind as you tip into there you're going to run it out in turn two a couple guys will like to keep it tight in here you can see sean double apexes this and gets a good drive out of turn three as he heads up shifts it to Fourth gear up over the top of this rise, Greg. It's going to be super fast. Bike gets light. Then we go down into turn 12, another very tricky area of racetrack. That this place flows a lot. And this is one of those spots where you've got to let the bike just kind of roll. As you can see, it comes up over the top of the brow of that hill into this whole big, long last section that you were talking about, this long, long right. You'll see it comes through here, gets the apex, keeps the bike over to the right a little bit to open it up that last corner, which is actually a little bit banked, and then onto that front straightaway. Great onboard shots. Thanks to Insta360 for that track lap. All right, we're going to step away as we are just four minutes away from a race start. Cameron Bobier looking for some redemption from yesterday's DNF.
with so much still on the line here this weekend, Roger. Talk about Cameron Bobier. He starts from the pole position again, didn't finish the race yesterday. How do you overcome those battles? I think with Cam's experience, he'll, he'll be able to do that. Uh, he's been a little bit, seems like a step ahead of the other guys all weekend. This morning in the warm-up, though, he was kind of down there around ninth or 10th. So, uh, you know, not sure. Just the team had to build the bike. You've seen it yesterday flipping. So, uh, you know, great crew. I'm sure Tyler Cycle got the bike back out. But you just got to put it behind you. Figure out what he did yesterday. Uh, look at the data. You know, realize that I get on the throttle too soon, uh, more than the previous lap. It, Yesterday, he really was about to break this race open the very first lap. He did a 24-9 from a, a stop, and that's just incredible. I mean, I did, couldn't believe. I thought the lap timer thing was, was glitched. And uh, so if he can do that today again, these other guys see that, and they're going to have to step up that first lap. Xavi Forez uh, was able to finish inside of the top six yesterday in that race, and he's going to be even more comfortable aboard that number 34 Suzuki from Visionable M4X Star Suzuki uh, today. Let's take a look at Barber Motorsports Park, Roger. 2.38 miles, 17 corners. It's one of the, the dry, riders' favorites. Uh, it's so much fun with the elevation. Turn one goes downhill. Turn two and three is a really long right-hander. You can use two lines through there. Up over turn four was one of my favorite corners. It was blind on the other side. Hard braking into turn five. Important to get a run out of there down into the museum corner, turn eight. Little downhill. You'll see the riders going over the curb there. Through that really fast chicane, 10 and 11. Turn 12, back downhill, up over 13. Uh, long right-hander into, into 17. It's a busy lap around there. It's a fun one. It's a lot of elevation. And uh, all these riders love coming to Barber. It's been paid recently as well in the last couple years. And just a really special track. When you take a look at that track map, you consider the fact that with Superbike Cup, the stock thousand bikes that are out there with Superbike this weekend, what is the most important section of the racetrack? Uh, the the first part, I think, because it the all the way to turn five, because turn five is the best place to pass. If you can get a good run through there, and then the, the second part would be probably that last sector. That seems like those are the sectors that kind of separate uh, the field the, the most. See the team, personnel, everybody leaving the grid area. The riders all have their helmets on. That means it is about time to go for the warm-up lap. And the second race for Superbike here on this triple header weekend will soon be ready to go. Saw so Sean Dylan Kelly there. He looked focused for the, the challenge ahead today. The museum on site, some inside looks at some of the motorcycles that are here. This is a destination place, not just a racetrack. You gotta come check out the Motorsports Museum. Mason Pridmore even has some stuff in here. Some leathers and one of his bikes from back in the Michael Jordan Motorsports days. It is true, Michael Jordan used to own a race team for 10 years, JP. Yeah, it was, it was a neat experience being around all that back then. and. Uh, it's neat going in there and seeing one of my bikes, but you know, like I always tell everybody, we know why it's in there. It's not because of me, but uh, but it is nice to be represented at the Barber Museum. It's an amazing facility. All right, Jay, warm up lap going on right now. Yeah. Good time for the racers to see. They've already seen on the siding lap, but they're going to get a good look at it now. Let's take a look at that starting grid. It was Cameron Bobier for 22 446. Your we have Baz and Gagne. Then we have yesterday's winner, Camp Peterson, Josh Heron, and Sean Dylan Kelly on row two. Row three is going to be Bobby Fong and Hayden Gillum at JD Beach. Then we have Chavi Flores and Brandon Potts on the M4 bikes with Bryce Prince rounding out that row. Benjamin Smith, Max Flinders, and Ashton Yates on the Honda. Andrew Lee, Nolan Lampkin, and Wyatt Ferris. Good to see Wyatt back. In the paddock, Jason Waters, Richard Kerr from Ireland. Good to see him here, D.A. Campbell. And then we have uh, Daniel Lewis, Giannato, and Camacho with Sierra, Morongo, Manny Segura, John Knowles, and Bobby Davis rounding out the field. Big grid, Greg, and I uh, thought it was really interesting getting Hannah talking to Baz there. I, I think the R5 is the right choice. He's got to be able to go with them and then try to manage it. See that, uh, you know, Josh Heron's on the R7 still, it looks like, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you can see that the 
Yamaha's that led the way yesterday. Mm -hmm. After about five laps, the rear end started moving around with that R5, so it is about managing that tire. So we'll see if that's the right choice where his teammate number two middle part of your screen there decided to stick with the R7 compound Dunlop rear and both those Ducati riders on the R7 front. Such a variety of tires available here, but it's now time to get after it. It's 20 laps. Steel Commander Superbike race number two. We're away, and it looked like the number one plate got a tremendous launch from third spot in the grid, but it's going to be Bobier again who leads the way. And is he going to repeat this jackrabbit start he had yesterday? Well, this time it's Gagne following in. Cam Peterson did, I thought, a commendable job yesterday somewhat of trying to get himself onto the back of the number six. This time it's Gagne who we've also seen get off to these jackrabbit starts. Both of the attack Yamaha boys are second and third as Heron is making a move, Ooh. but he's not going to make the corner. Heron is off out into the gravel, and uh, he's going to make it all the way to the barrier, Greg. So, I'm not sure what happened there. Josh just really uh, just got in there too hot. So look to see if he's up and OK. That was weird. It almost yeah. looked like maybe like a he got a little bit of a tank slapper and grabbed the brakes and didn't have the pads for it. It definitely looked like that, yes. Yeah. Anyway, Cameron Bovier, Tyler Cycles out front. Then you have attack, performance, progressive Yamahas of the number one. Jake Gagne, number 45, yesterday's race winner. Cameron Peterson in tow. And Sean Dillon Kelly puts himself into fourth spot, leading the rest of the field. And Heron's back up, and he's trying to dig himself out of that gravel trap. Yep, yeah, and he will he will push. If that bike is okay, he'll do everything he can. You gotta remember, Greg, in these kind of situations, the red flag can come out, and Josh can get right back in. So always love seeing him do that. Now, let's see what this standing start lap is today. 24-9 yesterday was the lap that we were gonna try to chase. Today it's gonna be a 25-6. So if you think about it, here's that, that mistake. And, you know, we'll get to the bottom of this later, I'm sure. It was such a big miscue that it almost didn't look like something you said, Greg. It could have come over that rise in turn four, got a little bit of a tank slapper, separated those pads, a little bit like we saw in Atlanta a couple of years ago. Exactly. Greg. Yep. Exactly what happened. Down into turn number five we go, Charlotte's Webb. Cameron Bovier, like Jason mentioned, about six tenths of a second slower from a standing start than he was yesterday. Maybe what happened yesterday is Bovier decides, hey, look, if I'm out front, I'm out front. I can set the pace and control it. But he still has just about a big of, as lead, of a lead. It was .9 after the first lap yesterday. It was .7 today. The other interesting thing here, SDK has made his way through on Loris Baz early in this race. You heard Sean say that he wanted to try to get to the front sooner. He's done it. He's trying to get himself onto the back of those attack Yamahas and try to battle for this podium position. You see Cam Peterson there getting loose a little bit on the exit of that fast right. So these guys right now, they have to try to keep that gap from getting too much bigger up in the front. Cam Peterson looks like he's got a little bit of pace still, as we saw yesterday, winning. But right now he's pushing his teammate Jake Gagne pretty hard. The top pro racing team of Sean Dillon Kelly closing the gap on the Yamahas in front of them. And Jay, what was interesting in talking to the attack performance progressive Yamaha team, about their experience so far this weekend at Barber Motorsports Park. They had spent all winter long completely transforming this Yamaha R1. They did a lot of stuff with seating position, different tank, different seating position. It was Gagne, looked like he lost the front for a moment, able to hold it on. But anyway, the, the wheelbase was super long. They made all kinds of changes to pivot positions and offsets. And when they got here to Barber, it didn't work. And so they're still in the process of kind of re-getting this bike as the 45 goes up the inside on his teammate. Nice clean pass from Cameron Peterson. And all the while, there's Sean Dillon Kelly. And now all of a sudden you look at the number one and you think, wait a second, is he going to fall victim to SDK here in a moment as Cameron Peterson sees Cameron Bobier eking away and wants to try to close the gap down quickly. And Loris Baz is also coming back towards this uh, battle for second. Kempi definitely has some pace. Like I said just now, you can see it through here. You can see it down through this next section. He was able to let the bike really flow. He got a good drive out of turn two, got up through turn four fast, and was able to outbreak his partner, or his teammate rather, down into turn five. Hannah. Touch base with Josh Heron very quickly. You can see the team is hard at work here, just trying to fix some little things from the bike tipping over. Josh is up and okay. He said that during that turn, he see, it seemed like everybody was stopping really kind of early on the brakes, and he felt like he had nowhere to go. Yeah, and that definitely is what it looked like as well. As Heron rolled off and tried to get on the brakes, it was like all the traffic in front of him just had stopped. So he took evasive action, and again, 
the raw talent of Josh Heron evades taking anybody out. We've seen that in the past as well. Gagne looks a little susceptible here, doesn't he? I think STK is going to try to make a run on him as they come up over the top of this rise. Let's see how good the BMW gets over the top. He's a little bit too far back, I think, this lap. But uh, right now, Gagne, as he looks down the inside, STK does. Look just behind Baz, too. That's Chavi Flores. Another day on that, that M4 uh, Suzuki. And he's got himself right into this podium battle as well. So good to see Chavi Flores on the 34 just behind Baz there. But you almost feel like right now that, you know, if Gagne gets passed by STK, there's a whole host of riders, including Bobby Fong, that are there to, to jump all over him. Yeah, I just wonder, looking at the number one bike, if they made some setup changes to try to get this thing to turn a little bit better, that they missed it a little bit because Gagne is not able to run the pace that we've seen him run last time by a 25 flat yep. and the best lap for him at a 24-1. And we know that Gagne is the one who set the pace at 22-0 as the fastest lap. But Chavi Forez on the Vision Wheel M4X star Suzuki back there in sixth place, having a good run at it in the mid to high 27s. There is a good look yeah. at him, or sorry, 23s. And he goes up underneath Baz. And so like that, there's a Suzuki GSX-R1000 moving forward. Yeah, and this is where he's got to try to protect a little bit. Is Baz going to make it back up the inside? He does. So these two guys have seen each other before on track overseas. I'm positive of that. So now Forres is going to go to work again on Baz. Could see some action down here in turn five with a bunch of guys getting ready to, like, this This time I think STK is actually close enough. Let's see if he can make this pass on Gagne as he goes down the inside. The 40 is up alongside. Oh, oh. He's just got to get it stopped, and yep. He does, Gagne, he parks him. Gagne wasn't able to get it back underneath him. A lot of times in that corner, Greg, you just got to get up alongside the guy. You don't need to make the pass all the way. If you can get up alongside of it and then control your apex speed, you can make that pass work. I saw STK try it in the lap before. This time he made it work. All right, so the 40 passes and makes it stick, Hannah. Well, for Cameron Peterson, trying to replicate yesterday's results, I asked him, what is it that made the difference between Friday and Saturday? You know, and over the winter, the team made a lot of ergonomic changes to that motorcycle, including making it longer. And early in the weekend, it wasn't just quite turning the way he wanted, and you spend so much time on the end, edge of the tire. They made some changes to the motorcycle that went more toward last year's setup, and it really made the difference. So he's definitely charging towards the front and hoping to do the double here in Alabama. Yeah, as of this moment, he's 2.6 oh, seconds up behind. Gagne and J.D. Beach has crashed, Greg. Mm, yeah, so J.D. Beach out, and looks like he's dinged up a little bit as he starts walking away. So J.D. Beach fans, unfortunately, for him. And his Tytler cycle BMW, he's out. But Chavi's got by Gagne as well. Gagne's got something going on, and he is not Fong, comfortable Bobby's on it. Bobby's done the same, so yeah, you're right, Greg. That could have been a small setup change that maybe just isn't working. But you're 100% you're right. These guys have all got through on the number one fairly easily. Now, it hasn't been a smooth sailing weekend for the attack performance progressive Yamaha of Jake Gagne and his crew. When they got this thing out of the truck and they went to track, there was an electronics problem. They missed some of the session, the first session as well as yesterday, uh, on Friday actually, Friday afternoon, they had a little bit of trouble as well. But uh, obviously it looks like there's some type of setup or some other issue. But John Dylan Kelly looks like he's starting to reel in Cameron Peterson as that gap is now just about uh, half a second from the 45 to the 40. Yeah, he looks good too. That 40 looks really solid. Let's keep in mind, Cam Bobier is 3.4 seconds up the road, Greg. He's still circulating in the 23s. He's the only rider out there right now that is doing so. Betting is now available for Moto America fans. Go to nxtbets.com slash play MA. For more information, visit MotoAmerica.com. Well, I like what I'm seeing from Chavi for us on that Vision Bill M4X star Suzuki. Only really his second day on the bike, especially at pace. I mean, this weekend is physically demanding for these Steel Commander Superbike riders as we have 60 laps on deck total under race conditions. This is our second race of the weekend, and we have another one coming up this afternoon. But it also works in Chavi Forez's favor because he gets to do these really long runs. And we expect by the time he gets to that third race, he's going to have even more sorted out. But Bobby Fong loves seeing this on the wrench motorcycles, Yamaha R1. Fong is doing such a great job to latch onto the back of these riders. Don't forget the bike in front of him is a bike that Fong was on at some point in his career. And Bobby is usually really good towards the end of a race as well. I remember him last year at Brainerd really storming to the front. And, uh, and, and bringing that bike forward, and he's doing the exact same thing. Yesterday, I think, you know, he was a little bit off yesterday, so again, not sure if that team went to work overnight to help the 50 get a little bit more comfortable, 
And uh, you can see him right in this battle right now with Baz and Chabby Forez. So STK continues to close that gap down. 24 flat last time for the leader. It's the first time I've seen Cam Bobier into the 24s. He's built up essentially a four second lead, Greg. And uh, now it's just a matter of him just being able to kind of put it like Bobby Fong. It looks like he's trying to go up underneath Forez. He does. He's gonna make it, he's gonna make it. So Bobby Fong able to get that R1 turn really nicely through that turn 14, 15, 16 section. And he's doing exactly what we'd expect to see Bobby Fong do, just keep charging, going forward. Yeah, and the good thing about the Wrench Motorcycles crew is that they do it the way they want to do it. And how they develop their R1 as a super bike. And you look at that beautiful swing arm that's holding on that rear tire. And that is an iteration that they've been using that they love so much. And from what I'm told, there's another one being developed that's going to be even better. And speaking about even better, Cameron Bobier, even better than yesterday's first couple laps where he exited early. And he has got this race under control as we get our first look at the riding style and the machine and how it's moving underneath Cameron Bobier. Yeah, they did a good job getting this bike ready. You can see, look how good that bike went over that little section of the track as far as this this little uh, curbing goes choppy forest, makes a small mistake there. So he's gonna look back, see nobody behind him. He's gonna have to put his head down to get back into this fight, Greg. But uh, yeah, Ken Bobia looks incredible at the front. I like the fact that we have four different brands of motorcycle right now in the top six, uh, as far as that goes. And you know, it hasn't always been like that. And it, you know, it's, it's just nice to see the different brands up there. We need to get Chavi Forrest up there in a, a battle, but he's lost a lot of time on this lap, sadly. Look at Bobby the, going yeah. up underneath Baz now as well. So there goes Fong underneath the 74, 76 of Loris Baz on that Warhorse HSBK Racing Ducati. Fong, of course, our pole sitter at our first round this season at Road Atlanta and was able to finish third in race number one. And Baz goes right back around him. He's gonna try to square Ooh, it up. Bobby. Bobby tried it right there, didn't he? Oh, he had the he had the notion to try to use a lot of exit there, get the bike stood up off the edge of the tire, but it just snapped underneath him, and he wasn't able to make that pass. Now he's got to work hard to get by Baz again as they come down here into this turn five section. Baz too good on the brakes right there, but uh, the 50 has pace, and Baz makes a small mistake, but, but Bobby just wasn't quite close enough to take advantage of that. Yeah, Bobby also saw the fact that at that point, Baz had let the lever off, corrected the mistake, and was able to drive out. And Bobby forced the issue. That could have been clattering of some body work on the racetrack. Yeah, no question. So there's Chavi Forrest. Chavi lost, uh, what did he do that last time by, Greg? 25-8. Guys in front of him were in the 24-24-2 for Bobby Fong. As Cam Peterson gets it a little bit loose again. The number 40, though, still getting closer. They're essentially doing the same exact lap times, but you, know, you have to you have to say that SDK's bike looks pretty solid underneath. It looks pretty planted. Uh, we've seen Cam get a little bit out of shape a couple times now. And the other thing about Sean Dillon and Kelly too is he kind of talked about this before the broadcast. He was riding with Baz. He was riding with uh, Josh Heron, and he was figuring those riders out, figuring those motorcycles out. Now we have another learning experience for Sean Dillon and Kelly, and that is being behind the 45 of Cam Peterson. He won the race yesterday, but a different style of motorcycle, maybe different riding style. So he's continuing to learn. And at this point, unless you're Sean Dillon Kelly and you think that you have enough pace to pass Cameron Peterson and then pull away, there really is no point of, of trying to lead the second place battle. Just try to force the issue and see if Cam Peterson breaks at any point. He certainly didn't do that yesterday. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. Cam did a tremendous job of doing exactly uh, what you just said, he didn't make any mistakes yesterday. And for STK, I in practice on Friday, I saw him get on the back of Jake Gagne. I saw him get on the back of this man right here, Cam Bobier, who's leading. And so STK is getting his share of track time behind the guys that he wants to race against. And, you know, Greg, what you're trying to do then is you're trying to figure out tendencies. There's some of these guys that STK's never raced against. Some of them he has. And on top of that, on a super bike, getting that experience and learning what these guys might do a little bit different and what he can take back to his crew and those guys under the top pro tent and let them know what he saw out there that the other guys are doing and he'd like his bike to do better. So this is all part of the growth and the learning experience that this guy has. But he did exactly what he told Hannah he was going to do. He got up front early and once you're there in that pace, it's a lot easier to run it. So for the top three, Cameron Bovier, Cameron Peterson, and Sean Dillon Kelly. Dunlop R5 rear. When we talk about these designations, 
the lower the number, the softer the compound tire. Now, the carcass remains the same, but the tire compound is a little bit softer. The softer the compound, it, it kind of is counterintuitive for a lot of people, but the more heat in the racetrack, the better the softer compounds end up working. The harder compounds could cold tear. So with the sun out like it really wasn't yesterday as we got to the end of the race yesterday and the rain was threatening. So R3, R5 combo for Bobier and Peterson, but for Sean Dillon Kelly, he stayed with that R0 front, Jason. You've ridden on all these tires, and so you understand the difference between the R0, the R3, the R5, and the R7 fronts and rears. Yeah, I have. I've, I've been lucky enough as Not we see. Chavi. Chavi's got a problem, doesn't he? So this is this is a bit heartbreaking, really, because this guy was running up front with the guys he wanted to be racing against, but you can see he's coasting, got his arm up. He's this right towards the end of the lap. So whatever has happened has happened uh, somewhere in that back section. And it uh, looks like he's going to make it through as you see Cam Bobier go through on him. But yeah, great. Getting a chance to ride on all these different tires has been really fun for me. And the uh, R0 is a tremendous tire. It's a little softer, but it's incredibly durable. So, um, and a lot of times in the heat, these tires work better in the heat. So uh, looking at the times, 24-4 that time for Bobier on the way through. 24-7 for this chasing group behind. Bobby Fong had fallen off the back end of this group just a little bit, but he's done a nice little recovery here to get himself back into this position. And now Baz is really right up the back of SDK as they go through turns two, three, and then up over this turn four. Really tricky on a super bike, Greg. You gotta use your legs a lot to kind of use them as a spring as you go up over the top of that hill. Let the bike dance around underneath you ever so slightly. So 4.9 seconds is the gap out front, and it's kind of just sustainable now for Cambodia. So Jay, you mentioned it earlier, Morris Baz, the 76, choosing to switch from the R7 rear tire to the R5. His front tire is still the R7, the hardest one. A lot of this has to do with setup of the motorcycle and the feel that each rider wants out of their motorcycle. So even going from same bike to same bike and choosing different tires, it's such a personal preference, especially with the way Dunlop has this carcass the same and just a little bit of rubber. But Baz had done a great job of reeling Sean Dillon Kelly in and Jay, as we get a closer look and a longer look, we'll have to see if there's a certain part of the racetrack where Loris Baz is just a little bit better than these two in front of him. He's able to close that gap up. Now, speed difference, of course, gives you an accordion effect. It's when yep. we get on the gas and get after it and show us the real gap. Well, you can see, too, what Loris is doing there. He knows that he's still got plus zero on his board, and he's protecting that inside line now because uh, Bobby rolled around there and rolled through underneath him pretty easily. Let's go a little bit further back. This is Gagne back here. Just, you know, this is definitely not what we're used to seeing, especially when he's got Hayden Gillen coming up behind him, Brandon Posh behind him. So Jake obviously just got a little problem today. He's going to do everything he can to soldier on. This is our points leader by 20 points right now over the guy who's leading. So the thing is for Gagne, you know, you gotta, you gotta, on your bad days, you gotta try to bring the thing home. And this right now for, for Gagne doing 26-1. Guy behind him break, 25-3. Good to see a Honda out there. It's been some time since we've seen a Honda in Superbike. And here's Brandon Posh on the other M4 X-Star Suzuki, Vision Wheel X-Star Suzuki. So Brandon right now running uh, eighth place. 25-3 is what he's doing. Hannah, what do you got about Chavi? You can see behind me the number 34 has retired. He's pulled into the pits. I touch base with him really quickly. He only said one word. I asked, you know, what do you think's going on? He said engine. So I'm sure the team will be hard at work to diagnose that and hopefully get him back out for race number three this afternoon. Thanks, Hannah, because, Jay, when we did show the shot of Chavi when he was slowing down, we did hear a little bit that the engine sounded really sick. So that would make a lot of sense in confirmation of that. Let's go to the 69 here of Hayden Gillum. This is the Honda CBR 1000RR-R SP. And this motorcycle that you're looking at is actually in stock 1000 trim. Now, for Hayden Gillum, he does have two machines that he's racing, one in stock 1000 and one here in Steel Commander Superbike. And it's good to see Honda back in the mix, and that's on the back of some incredible contingency program that Honda has here in Moto America, well over $2 million available for racers. And Jay, we went from zero or maybe one Honda CBR 1000 to six of them this weekend, but back to the battle for second place. Middle part of the race, Jay, we see this in Steel Commander Superbike. It's like the mad dash, the first three to five laps, a settling down off in a pace in the middle, and then as we get to these closing laps with six and a half to go, we expect some riders to start making some big moves. Well, now it's just strategic, isn't it? You wanna 
Don't want to show your hand too soon. You see Camp Peterson still running that little bit faster, or a little bit wider line on the edge of the museum. You can see SDK doing a little bit of what like Jake Gandhi was doing yesterday, a little tighter exit out of that museum corner. So now it's just a matter of strategizing things. And if you're like in a position where Baz is, he knows he's got somebody behind him. He's got two guys up in front of him as we get back to the battle between Gagne and Gillum here. You can see these guys, uh, like you said, Greg, having them on the back in the paddock is is incredible. And Gillum's, you know, he's already shown how forceful he's going to be this weekend, just alone in the stock thousand category. And uh, hopefully in the future, we can see him on a proper superbike as he looks to go up underneath Gagne and he makes that pass. So Jake Gagne falling victim to a stock thousand machine. So we're definitely confident that Gagne is not in full form with his motorcycle at the moment. Real Steel Motorsports CR1000 RR-R is Hayden Gillum, and that moves him up into sixth place. And that's a, if you win a superbike race on a Honda in this series this year, JP, $25,000. Anybody who races that motorcycle. I believe it's 10 grand in stock thousand, so. Yeah, and I think yeah. it's 6,000 for sixth place, which is what Hayden Gillum's in. Yeah, he's doing a good job. But all eyes forward for Cameron Bovier, the number six. He's controlled the pace since the beginning after laying down the fastest lap of the race back on lap number two, a 123.595. Bovier has had it all his way, and as you would expect from Cameron Bovier, JP, no he question. learned from his mistake yesterday. Yeah, there's no question. And now he's just pit board reading, uh, is the number six. He's going to see five laps to go on his board this next time by. He's up to 5.3 seconds. He's still in the low, low 24s, circulating around here. And, uh, you know, he's, he's made this one look obviously pretty easy. He was on his way to doing this, I feel like, yesterday as well, Greg, if it wasn't for that small mistake. He just seems like he's got pace around this, this, this Barber Motorsports track. And it's just a track that you have to flow with, and it looks like he's just got that on this bike. Let's talk a little bit about championship, JP. Because yesterday when Cameron Bobier fell off his motorcycle, he gave basically all the points to his championship rival, Gagne, who coming into this race was leading this championship by 20 points over Bobier. Now, 20 points is what uh, Jake Gagne got for second place yep. finish yesterday. But now with Gagne falling back, he's gonna he's poised to give back at this moment 16 points back yep. to Cam Bobier. Now, Jay, in the middle of Barber Motorsports Park, there is a scoring pylon. When you're riding here as a racer, can you actually see and look at the scoring pylon so Cam Bobier might know where Jake Gagne is, yeah, even yeah. if his team's not giving him the information? You definitely can. And some riders will be so locked in that they won't look at that. And so there's going to be some riders that can take the time. I mean, like right now, he's got, you know, he's got a five-second lead. So that would be something you'd have to ask him, I think, is, you know, with a five-second lead, did you have a ponder or at least a look up to see who maybe was behind you? They might have it on his board. The camp he is running uh, in second. But then it may, might be curious of where the rest of the field is. And so, uh, you know, he may or may not. But, yeah, that pylon being out in the middle of the racetrack is very visible and easy to see even when you're out there on track. So he may or may not have had a little peek at that. Cam Peterson coming off his big win yesterday, starting to put a little bit of daylight between himself and third place, Sean Dillon Kelly. And once again, Kelly coming under fire from the 76 all the while. Bobby Fong stalking him back there. Bobby Fong's done such a good job. Mid, you oh. know, a couple laps ago, we thought he's going to lose touch, but he's right there. He's Tate right Dillon there this time, too. He's right there right now. I mean, look at this. Bobby could try, but man, Baz is so strong on the brakes as they go down into that turn. And Baz runs a little bit wide again. And Whoa, it looks Bobby. like Bobby was thinking about having to go. I mean, literally, Greg, that is a matter of a, a foot or two. If Baz would have gone out just a little bit further, the 50 would have had to go there and try to get by him. Museum corner over the big bump. Both bikes look pretty planted at the two. Boy, SDK just choosing that tight line it's gets tight. off that corner but, so well. But you can see how much time he made up, Greg. He was, he was what, three or four tenths back at the end of that lap. And Cam does a really nice job of putting this behind. Uh, you know, he does a good job at the, the end part of this lap. As you see Posh on the left, he's going to go up underneath Gagne 2 here, going down into there. And this is tight because he's over the grass almost. He goes by Gagne. So that's another point or so lost to your point earlier of what that's going to do in the, in, the, in the point situation. So Bobby right now, four to go. He's going to have three to go this time by. He's probably really starting to think, all right, that podium's up there. i got to start making something happen. we got some back markers it looks like they're going to be coming up on. 
and uh, that can always throw a little bit of a wrench in things. So, um, see right through here, Greg, they all get so close. You can see Baz is so close to SDK, and here they come. This is a bad spot to catch somebody right here going up over the top of this crest. We'll see if all four riders are able to get through. They are, they're all able to get past. I believe that's Joe Giannato on the 84 Kawasaki they just went through. But now you're looking at, at two and a half laps. The SDK is even trying to make a push. Let's see when he comes out of here, Greg, he's up alongside Campy right now, but that is a hard place to make a pass. But watch how tight the BMW turns out of this right-hander that they're in now. Watch, watch the difference in lines here. You can see that, that BMW, even the Ducati's on a tighter line as SDK has a look over his shoulder to see that big red number 76 right behind him. So John Dillon Kelly has the information that he needs, and now he understands that if he has a plan to pass Cam Peterson, that it might be foiled, because he got an eye full of two riders behind him. Chances are he didn't even know Bobby Fong was there, because Morris Bass's bike is right in the line of view. All the while, Cameron Bobier managing a 4.7 second lead out front. Look at this Bobby, look at Bobby. Bobby going from, trying to go up, uh, boy, he didn't get it done, Jay, but wow, he got that bike turned. Yeah, but you know what, that's, that's respect among both riders there. Baz actually gave him a little space. Bobby also gave Baz a little bit of space. But, you know, I feel like Bobby thinks that that's the kind of move he's got to pull off to get to the spot he wants to get to. I'm sure if you talk to him after this race, Bobby will say, gosh, so frustrating. Because, you know, Baz is trying to race forward, and he's got a guy behind him, and Bobby's doing everything he can to get through. And again, this is a place where we'll see somebody get squared up. See, Bobby dives down to the inside, and right now, Baz knows he's there. So this is good on both riders. Baz doesn't just chop the nose off of the 50. He's, he holds his line, and Bobby doesn't use any more exit than he needed to do there. So good heads up riding by both guys there. Back to live pictures in the battle for second place. John Dillon Kelly up alongside Cameron Peterson for the moment. It just feels to me, Jay, like Cam Peterson carrying a little bit more of that speed down at the bottom of the museum corner is able to get that one or two bike lanes he needs. I wonder if Sean Dillon Kelly's got that line sorted out. He keeps doing and using the tight line, but will he learn and maybe have that wider line in his back pocket as we get close to that white flag lap and the final lap to go in this 20 lap Steel Commander Superbike race number two of the weekend. Now SDK's also got to be thinking about the BMW behind him as the white flag is out for Cambodia. And you can see again, Nolan Lampkin just up ahead of this of this four guys. So uh, Bobby's just, just off the back a little bit. Look how close Baz rolls up on these guys in the middle here. And he's good on the brakes, but so is SDK. And he just doesn't get up over the top of this rise as good as the other guys. So that's why we're probably not going to see anything happen down here now. Bobby's close enough if, if Bass gets in a little too deep. Let's see if he does. Look at Bobby. He's trying again. They just can't quite make that happen. Now I think it's going to have to be a big pass from this far forward. Cam Peterson yesterday did a tremendous job of kind of protecting his line through all the rest of the track. The next best plot place for SDK is going to be after they come out of this very fast left right. There's Cam Bobier. He's four seconds up the road. Out of this left right, if SDK can get a good drive out of here, he can set himself up to the inside of Cam Peterson as they come through. Not, not close. Cam's just too good through all this little section, and Cam's going to keep it tight through turns 15, 16 here at the top of the Come up over the top of this rise, Craig. You'll see that 45. He'll be glued to the paint down on the right side. I don't think Sean Dillon Kelly's going to want to risk it, but our race leader, Cameron Bobier. He's done what he needed to do after disaster yesterday, and onto the front straightaway comes a tightler cycle BMW racer, Cameron Bobier, and the battle for second place, and Sean Dillon Kelly was able to get around him, and wow. SDK doesn't settle for third, and he's able to get into second place, and Cam Peterson in third. What a ride for Sean Dillon Kelly in his first podium in Steel Commander Superbike, and he's able to get past yesterday's race winner, Cam Peterson, and snatch second place. So BMW 1-2, followed by Yamaha, Ducati, Loris Baz in fourth, Bobby Fong in fifth, Posh in sixth over Hayden Gillum in seventh place, Jake Gagne in eighth. And I'm thinking that SDK probably squared, squared Cameron up in that last corner because Cam was going to go through that long right, very, very tight, which is going to slow his mid-corner speed down. SDK probably rolled around the outside and put himself to the inside. 
going into that last corner. But what can you say about a bounce back for the Titler Cycle team and Cameron Bobie? It's exactly what he needed to do, especially when his main title rival ends up eighth today. And also for Cameron Bobier, 20 laps in a controlled pace. Even though he was going as fast as he needed to go to yeah. win this race, yeah. there's a possibility he was able to also save some energy during this race because he was controlling it the way he was controlling it. Let's get back to the finish, JP, really quickly. Yeah, and you could see he'd already got by him at that point. So, mm -hmm. and you can see how happy he is obviously to get that first podium for su in Superbike for this top pro team, who we've talked a lot about this week. They've done a tremendous job with so many riders, Greg, and uh, a lot of their riders are running up in that front group. But we knew it was only a matter of time for this kid to get a podium, and he did a tremendous job today doing so. So Cameron Bobier, our first repeat winner of the 2024 season. We're gonna have a conversation with him in Winner's Circle when we get back to Barber Motorsports Park. And our live coverage will continue here on Moto America Live Plus as you continue to watch Cameron Bobier getting around this racetrack. There's Hayden Gillum coming through the picture to congratulate him. But Roger, that ride to the finish by Sean Dylan Kelly to move up a step, finish off second. He was celebrating as soon as he crossed the stripe, so much so we saw him <laughs> pop the suit. Yeah, he's gonna look a little bit bigger when he gets to the podium if that airbag don't go back down. When he came through turn one, he was jumping up and down and banging his tank so much as the airbag went out and he, he was excited he should be that was a really good ride by Sean you know being so close to the podium yesterday and then missing out on it, it's just a little disappointing and you know Cam Bobier you asked before the race what do you do to, to bounce back is exactly what he did you know and I think he could have went a little quicker I think if he needed to he just kind of managed that, that race that four or five second gap he managed that one from start to finish, and he's going to get another shot uh, later on this afternoon as it is a triple header weekend for the Steel Commander Superbike category. You see the top pro motorsports team now making their way over to Winter Circle to celebrate this first podium finish for them here in the Superbike category. And for Cameron Bobia, he said it was all about redemption. All about redemption. He's going to have the points lead now after today's race, and, uh, you know, just. He has his wife here, he's got his kid here. It's gonna be really cool for him to be able to, to have that moment winning that Superbike race. Uh, slow down a little bit toward the end just to make sure he made it to the end and also having another race, you know, not uh, save your energy a little bit the last couple laps. We look down at the finishing order. That was a great battle between Loris Baz and Bobby Fong. Ultimately, there just weren't enough laps for Bobby to get any closer. How frustrated do you think he's going to be? I think they're going to be a little disappointed being that close. The, all four of those guys, it just seemed like they would close in and then separate, close in and separate. And for Bobby, just I think he feels like he had a little bit more pace, but he just couldn't make the pass. He couldn't make the pass stick. Loris is a really good racer and knows those you know, those corners to, to strike back really quick and not leave the, the door open and made it really hard for, for Bobby. Well, on the topic of Loris Baz and that Ducati, let's talk about his teammate, uh, Josh Heron, who started on the second row. We saw him right up there in the mix at the beginning, but then the problem struck. How does he get ready now for the second race? Today? I think just figure out what happened. It was a really weird uh, crash to, for Josh to get in there that deep and not be able to stop. So uh, figure out what happened. Josh came in. Uh, they fixed the bike. He did get to go out and do a couple laps, so he is going to know if the bike is going to be uh, – good from the crash so that's one good thing he doesn't have to worry about that going into the race but just kind of rebound and figure out what happened to that uh, you know to cause that to happen see him there celebrating with his family put yourself back in this rider mindset it's a doubleheader day not just a weekend what can these riders do between now and their next race to kind of calm down but then get their adrenaline right back up and ready just to go. try to get your core temperature down get fluid something to eat you know you're going to burn a lot of energy through it Superbike race and, and not spend a lot of time out running around. Get in that team lounge, cool down, and uh, get ready for the, the next race. You see all of the riders making their way over to the bike. Sean Dylan Kelly, he's going to break everything <laughs> while he's down there. This is a great moment for him and this team. The coverage is going to continue. Steel Commander Superbike coverage is brought to you by Steel Commander Corps a leading steel building manufacturer offering expertise, innovation, and a dedication to quality. And by Dunlop, the official tire of the Moto America Championship Series. 
celebration for Cameron Bobier and his team after his second race win of the season and Jason Pridmore. We've had four races and so far this season we've had five different finishers on the podium as we now welcome second place by three seconds Sean Dillon Kelly to the Steel Commander Superbike podium with Cam Peterson in third place. Let's get right down to Hannah for our interviews. Greg, incredibly crucial after yesterday's DNF, not only for Cameron Brobier to make it through this race with no drama of any kind, but also first place points. Cam, take us through that race. Once you got your head down, what's kind of going on in your mind to just maintain that pace? Yeah, uh, I felt so good. It's just pretty similar to yesterday. I put my head down at the beginning and I felt really, really good. Uh, had a had a little mishap there uh, in the second to last corner yesterday, but felt so good to get some redemption for the guys today. Um, felt really good at the beginning. Put my head down. I think everyone's kind of in the same boat. The tires get pretty pretty greasy. The first few laps are pretty 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 solid. Uh, a lot of grip, and then uh, they drop a little bit and kind of stay there. So um, felt really good to uh, yeah win by a little gap today after yesterday, like I said. But uh, shout out to Bell Alpine Stars and Man, Man Above for keeping us all safe out here. All the fans are coming out. Uh, this place is pretty special, you know. I got uh, my my little boys turning turning one next week here, and uh, my wife and her her parents. So uh, yeah, it's it's been a fun weekend, and uh, focus on the next one, and uh, yeah, see what happens. And the next one is right around the corner, guys. Congrats, to Cam Bobier. Oh yeah, that is that's done in style, and like we talked about, JP, we were talking five laps generally, and then you start to get a little bit of a drop off. Let's get back down to Hannah, who has. Sean Dillon Kelly. And a career first Superbike podium for Sean Dillon Kelly on his birthday weekend, no less. Sean, you got him right at the line, whereas yesterday it didn't quite work out in your favor. So take us through how you managed that risk and it pulled pulled it off. Oh my God, guys, I can't express how pumped I am to be up in the podium right now. Like, it's obviously a little bit uh, emotional just because it's been a uh, it's been a hard, hard uh, last couple years, and obviously I was in the, the place where I wanted to be. I was in the World Championship, and I learned so much, and I think it's showing right now. But last year, I, you know, I had some tough days with, with everything that happened with the injury and so on, and it just feels so amazing to be able to come on in. A lot of people doubted us, doubted Top Pro Racing Team, doubted what, what we'd be able to come in, and we've just showed that we're, we're strong, we're fighting, and we're learning every single time out. It feels incredible to be, to be up here on the podium right now. Thank you to the whole top, top pro racing team, all my guys, my crew, OnlyFans, uh, Palm Beach Police and Fire Foundation, uh, everyone that supports me. Thank you guys so much. Uh, I think this is only the beginning, and I can't wait for, for race two in a couple hours. Looking forward to seeing more from Sean Dillon Kelly and rounding out your Steel Commander Corp Superbike podium. Cameron Peterson coming off that win yesterday, trying to keep that momentum going for this race. You held on to second until right at the line. Is there anything you hope to do differently for this third race this afternoon? Yeah, don't be so stupid and leave the door open in the last corner. I knew I knew he was there and uh, yeah, just a dumb decision on my part, but that was a tough race, way harder than it was yesterday. Um, just struggling with some, some rear grip there. I know everybody was, but um, you know, congrats to SDK, first podium, I'm stoked for him, congrats to Cam, um, but yeah, thanks to the whole team for, for just giving me a best, the best bike and, and uh, three podiums in a row now, so I'm happy with that and uh, pretty cool to do it, my, my whole family is here, you know, every, we've got a big squad and uh, first race my wife has been to this year, so to get a win in a third is, is pretty cool, so uh, yeah, let's, let's try to do a couple bit in, in race three. Sounds like she's your lucky charm. Cam Peterson, guys. Yeah, what a great performance. And boy, I cannot wait to see what the points look like because Bobier made a whole heap of points back after losing 20 yesterday. So stay with us to find out. We'll continue here on Moto America Live Plus as we will watch these riders make their way up to the podium and get to celebrate with some hardware. Roger, let's go back and digest some of what was just said. First, we'll start off with Cameron Peterson getting beat right there at the line. He said it was a stupid decision on his part. What was your take? Well, just, you know, the last lap through there, it's, you really want to try to not open the racing line. You know, sometimes the, the racing line or the fast line on the last lap will let somebody else sneak in the inside of you. And Cam just knew he left the door open. And, uh, you know, SDK is a really good racer and, and knows, you know, you know where the, the place is on the track where guys are going to try to take their shots and you try not to leave the door open. And uh, he left it open and, and Sean came through. And I bet uh, race three this afternoon, if they're in that same spot, I bet Cam doesn't leave the door open. 
Look at Sean Dylan Kelly there holding that trophy high. He's certainly worked hard for this one. He said it's emotional and the doubts that people had about top pro racing and maybe the questions that were asked at Daytona when they introduced the program and the footprint that they were going to have here in the Moto America paddock. A lot of the questions have been answered now. They've, they're strong in multiple classes. Yeah, and almost every class they're they're at the front. They're super bike, podium, super sport. Uh, for them, I mean, it's just a huge challenge and not like just there's so many bikes, you know, to take on and come in a super bike. And that's why it's so important for people to hire the right guys. And they brought in some really good guys to that team. And that's what that's what you have to do and come in. And, uh, you know, it's just really it's just really hard to move in the super bike. And they did it well. And there's still going to be some growing pains, I'm sure, some down, somewhere down the line. But right now they're really doing well and they're learning fast. And you see Cameron Bobier, their five-time Moto America Superbike champion, the first repeat winner of the 2024 season. The largest margin of victory before the race today was 0.4 seconds. That came yesterday uh, that Cam Peterson had over Jake Gagne. Bobier slowed at the end to close the gap down to 3.0 seconds. The gap that he has on the rest of the Superbike field right now with another race today, what work needs to be done by the rest? I think the other guys just have to find an, another step. He's still a step ahead of the guys like he's been in practice and qualifying. And what they got to do is look at the data. Um, seemed like he struggled with grip maybe a little bit less than, than the other guys. And heard Cam Peterson talk about, you know, sliding around a lot. So they're going to have to figure out how uh, they can get Cam a little bit more comfortable with some more grit. And these riders are now going to make their way up to the media center for the post-race press conference. You look live out at the grid. You see that we have more racing still to come. It's going to be Junior Cup that will be up at the racetrack next, and this Superbike coverage is going to continue. It's a busy day of racing, Roger, for a lot of these teams that have entries in multiple categories. It's a lot of work for them. Back here at Barber Motorsports Park. Let's take a look at those standings. Oh, Gagne now leading by three. It was 20 coming into this race. Cameron Peterson only a single point ahead of Sean Dillon Kelly for third in this championship. 16 from one to four. Incredible race. We can't wait to do it again. We got a third race coming up later on today. Steel Commander Superbike round number two. It's been a lot of fun. It rolls on for Hannah and Jason. I'm Greg. See you soon for race three.